Hi, I'm Alan McEachran, director of the GeoVista Center at Penn State. This GeoVista micro lecture is the first in our series on geovisualization and related GI science topics. Here, I'll be introducing some key ideas from my first publication to use the term visualization in the title. That paper, titled A Pattern Identification Approach to Cartographic Visualization, was published back in 1990 and represents joint work with John Ganter, who was a master's student here at the time. The paper presents the conceptual underpinnings for what generated a couple of decades of subsequent research. The work was stimulated by a view that the communication paradigm dominating cartographic research then was causing researchers to miss a wide variety of important questions about the role of maps in creative thinking and insight generation. We were also stimulated by an important 1987 NSF workshop report on visualization in scientific computing. The approach to cartographic visualization outlined in our paper is based on the tenets listed here. Essentially, the key point is that visualization is not primarily about visual depiction of what we know. It's about generating insight into what we do not know. Thus, successful visualization requires human perception and cognition working in concert with visual display tools that enable multiple perspectives on data. The key focus in this paper is on the role of visualization in creating abstractions that can stimulate an iterative human perceptual and cognitive process to recognize and interpret patterns in data. The term visualization from this perspective is not a noun, it's a verb. Visualization is the process of abstracting data and exploring the result to achieve insight. The pattern identification approach introduced in the paper models visualization as a perceptual cognitive process supported by visual artifacts. In subsequent work, I introduced this expanded model that identifies three core steps, seeing, interpreting, and constructing knowledge. A working premise of this expanded model is that the visualization process works best if the tools are interactive, allowing users to manipulate their perspective. Several key ideas were introduced in the paper as fundamental to the design of effective cartographic visualization tools. First, mental constructs are critical to the visualization process. These constructs, called cognitive schemata in the revised model, enable us to recognize the entities we see as members of categories or as patterns. Thus, they allow us to link what we see to what we know. Second, the visualization process can fail due to the human tendency to miss what we're not actively searching for, or perhaps even to reinterpret what we see to match existing expectations. In relation to the model, this can happen if we try to match what we see to an existing schema when we really need to replace that schema, or at least revise it. Thus, we can miss entities and patterns, misidentify those patterns, or perhaps even see them where none exist. Following from these ideas, if visualization is to help us detect the expected and discover the unexpected, recently stated goal for visualization, then the tools must be able to prompt users to apply existing schemata to detect the expected while simultaneously breaking free of those schemata in order to discover the unexpected. Thus, the system should permit, in fact, maybe it should even demand that users view data from multiple perspectives. Interaction here is paramount. It supports a process of reasoning by enabling users to produce new viewpoints on data, to compare patterns that are noticed, and to iteratively refine those patterns as well as the schemata through which they're interpreted. 
This micro lecture emphasized the role of interaction and multiple perspectives in the visualization process, but it's important not to force interaction and multiple perspectives for their own sake. The key to supporting insights is to understand how scientists and others reason and to enable that reasoning process through opportunities to test and compare multiple schemata. If you found this micro lecture interesting and useful, I encourage you to read the original paper and to view part two in this series on visualization quality and domain needs. Till next time, this is Alan McEachran from the GeoVista Center at Penn State.